boys and girls, Miss Ellie and I are here to talk about Native American Heritage Month, and it's an important month because it honors our Native Americans. So according to the National Congress of American Indians, I got this off the internet, Native American Heritage Month celebrates rich and diverse cultures, traditions, and histories, and to acknowledge the important contributions of Native people. Heritage Month is also an opportune time to educate the general public about tribes to raise general awareness about the unique challenges Native people have faced both historically and in the present and on the ways in which tribal citizens have worked to conquer these challenges. It's also called Native American Alaska Heritage Month. Native Americans prefer to be referred to as belonging to a particular tribe. There are 573 separate tribal entities living in the U.S. So that number really surprised me. I couldn't believe there were that many. The more populous tribes include Cherokee, Navajo, and Choctaw, with the Ute, Yakima, and Cree listed among the less populous tribes. Some groups of indigenous people refer to themselves as a nation. We're going to focus on one area of the country and it's Native Americans. So we're going to talk about the Native Americans in our area today. So we live in the Great Plains, and some of the Great Plains tribes are the Cheyenne, Lakota Sioux, and Comanche. Uh, we're going to show a map on the screen of the Great Plains area and where these Great Plains tribes lived historically. The Great Plains region of North America stretches from Canada all the way down through North and South Dakota, Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, and Northern Texas. It includes land from the Mississippi River to the Rocky Mountains. It's dry land with flat rolling hills covered in tall grasses. The land was just right for bison to graze on. The people who lived on the Great Plains traveled with the animals, hunting them along the way, using them as their main source of food. Since they followed the bison, the Great Plains Native Americans picked up everything they owned and moved every few months. They invented tools to make it easier. The Cheyenne and Lakota Sioux used a travoy pulled by dogs to help move their belongings. Here's what a picture of what a travoy looks like. These were dragged across the ground by the dogs and could hold up to 250 pounds. Once they reached their destination, the poles of the travoy were used to build fences, trap bison, and create frames for teepees. The bison were extremely important to the people of the Great Plains. No part of the bison was wasted. They used the hides for cradles, curtains, teepee walls, clothing, blankets, and even canvases for painting pictures. Bison hair was used to make rope. Horns and bones were used for many different tools. Eventually, Native Americans were introduced to horses. We think they were here by the 1500s and were brought by the Europeans. Native Americans were able to make larger travois that horses could hold. Native Americans were able to travel farther and faster with horses. As other tribes started making their way onto Great Plains territory, horses became an important tool of war. You may have heard of Lewis and Clark. They were explorers that President Thomas Jefferson sent to explore the Great Plains and northwestern part of the country. He wanted them to take notes about the people and places they discovered. Lewis and Clark were not threatening to Native Americans. They just wanted to know about the natural resources of the land. There are many other tribes in the United States, but these are the main tribes of our area. You can check out books from the library about Native Americans and also check out Kukla and Libby online for a lot of other resources if you'd like to learn more. Telling stories was and is an important part of Native American culture. Culture is a pattern of behavior shared by a society or a group of people. Many different things make up a culture, like food, language, clothing, music, art, customs, beliefs, and religion. Native Americans use storytelling to stay connected to each other and their homeland. It's their way to preserve history. It's a way to keep their native languages alive. Their stories taught lessons and entertained. It's a way to pass down history and traditions. We're going to share one Native American folktale that has been passed down from generation to generation. I found this version on the internet from the website www.firstpeople.us. So this is one of the folktales that the Native Americans have passed down. It's called Moon Mother by Ed Young, and it tells the story how, of how man was created. 
And here is a sample of the story that I'm going to be telling you today. This one is called The Story of Jumping Mouse. It's a Native American legend retold and illustrated by John Steptoe. And this one was a Caldecott Otter book. So I'm just going to kind of show you a few of the illustrations of this book. You do with pencil, it looks like. So there are many different versions of this story, and I'm going to just read one out loud to you today. We're going to read to you Legend of the Jumping Mouse, and this is from the website First People. This is just one version of the story. There once was a little mouse. He and his friends loved to spend the evenings listening to the old ones tell stories. His favorite story by far was the story of the far off lands. So much did he love this fable, he would dream of the far off lands every night. One day, Little Mouse said to himself, I simply must see those far off lands. That very morning, he set off on his journey. He would travel most of the entire day, stopping only for rest, for food or drink. He came to a riverbank and his heart fell. Oh, how will I ever get across the river, he said to himself. From behind him, he heard a gravelly voice. Don't you know how to swim? He looked and saw a frog standing among some cattails. Swim? What is that? asked the mouse. The frog jumped into the water and began to kick her legs. This is swimming, silly. Now why do you want to cross the river anyway? I have been dreaming of the far off lands for many nights. I simply must see it, explained the mouse. My name is Magic Frog, said the frog, and I will help you. Bend down low and jump as far as you can. The mouse jumped, and he felt a strange feeling in his legs. They seemed much stronger than before, and he noticed that he jumped farther than he had ever been able to before. Why, thank you, Magic Frog. Good, that was good medicine you gave me. Magic Frog said, You will experience many hardships on your journey, but if you keep hope alive within you, you will reach the far-off lands, and I give you a new name. You are now called Jumping Mouse. She waved and hopped back off into the cattails. Jumping Mouse leaped across the river and turned to wave, but Magic Frog was gone. In the back of his mind, he could still hear Magic Frog's words, Keep hope alive within you. Jumping Mouse continued on until nightfall, then he dug a deep hole and went to sleep. The next day, Jumping Mouse reached the prairie. He was walking along when he saw a huge boulder ahead. As he got closer, he saw that it was not a boulder, but a large buffalo lying on the ground. My friend, said Jumping Mouse, why are you lying here as if you were dying? I am dying, said Buffalo. I drank from a poisoned pool of water, and now I have lost my sight. I cannot find the cool waters to drink or the sweet grass to eat. I am lying here waiting for the end. Jumping Mouse said, I am Jumping Mouse. My friend, Magic Frog, gave me some medicine powers. I am not as strong as her, but I will help you. I name you Eyes of a Mouse. No sooner had he said this when the buffalo stood, looked about, and blinked his eyes in amazement. He snorted with happiness. Jumping Mouse heard this, but he could not see it, for he had given away his sight. Why, thank you, my small friend, said Eyes of a Mouse. This is a wonderful gift you have given me. Climb on to my back, and I shall carry you to the edge of the prairie. Jumping Mouse climbed onto the mighty buffalo's back, and in this way, he reached the edge of the prairie. I am a creature of the prairie, so I must stop here. My friend, how will you make it over the mountains if you cannot see? Jumping Mouse said, there will be a way. I have hope alive within me. He waved goodbye to eyes of a mouse and turned to the mountains. He walked away, and when nightfall, he dug a hole and went to sleep. Jumping Mouse awoke with the sun and felt his way along the mountain path, sniffing for and occasionally nibbling on small grasses. Suddenly, he bumped into something. He felt fur beneath his little paws. He sniffed and realized that he had just stumbled upon a wolf. Hello? I am Jumping Mouse. Who are you? The wolf replied, I am a wolf. Jumping Mouse asked, why are you just sitting there in the middle of the path? The wolf sighed. I was once a very proud creature with a very good sense of smell. Because I was too proud, I have had this gift taken away. I have learned to be humble, but now I cannot smell to find food to eat. I will surely die. Jumping Mouse was saddened by the wolf's story. I have just a little medicine left. Please let me help you. I name you Nose of a Mouse. 
The wolf breathed in. He sniffed the mountain air. He howled with joy and danced in a circle. I can smell the trees and flowers again. Jumping Mouse heard the wolf's joy, but alas, he could not smell the trees or the flowers. He had given away his sense of smell. This is truly a wonderful gift you have given me, said Nose of a Mouse. You must let me repay you. Climb onto my back and I will carry you over the mountains to the far off lands. Jumping Mouse was carried over the mountains and soon his wolf friend knelt down so he would carefully climb down. Little friend, I am a creature of the mountains, so I cannot go on. But you, how will you get along? not being able to smell or see. Jumping Mouse said, There will be a way. Hope is alive within me. The two said goodbye, and Nose of a Mouse trotted back up into the mountains. I am here at last, said Jumping Mouse. I hear the leaves rustling through the trees. The sun warms my body. I feel the wind. But I will never be as I was. What am I to do? Jumping Mouse began to cry. Jumping Mouse... He heard a gravelly voice. Magic Frog, is that you? Yes, my friend, it is Magic Frog. You have suffered greatly on your long journey and experienced many hardships, but it was your unselfish heart and your generosity that helped to bring you here. You have nothing to fear, my little friend. Jump high, Jumping Mouse, jump high! Jumping Mouse leapt straight up, and he felt himself changing. His paws stretched out and became very powerful. He moved them up and down, and soon he was feeling the wind streaming over him and under him. He looked down, and he could see the mountains far below. He breathed in and could still smell the pines and the earth. From far below, he heard Magic Frog calling. Jumping Mouse, I give to you a new name. You are now called Eagle, and you will live in the far-off lands forever. So boys and girls, what do you think? Most folk tales have some kind of moral or lesson to a story. What do you think this moral is? Me you friends. My name is Miss Jackie, and I'm from a California tribe called the Akashima Nation, the Wenenya Band of Mission Indians. And I'm here to tell you a very important story a story that gives you a little bit of insight to our legends. Because we know that earthquakes scare little children, but we want you to know our legends, so it might help a little bit ease that fear. And in a moment, when I tell the story, I want you to remember three words that will keep you safe. Because there will be a great shakeout, and we want you to be ready. And the three words are drop, cover, and hold on. And in my language, we say, Ama, Gota, Ya. Come, listen to the story. I think you'll really enjoy it. Thank you for joining us, boys and girls. And make sure you check out some books and information about Native American Heritage Month. <laughs> there are quite a few Native American fables on Hoopla. So I would go check those out because they have way more than we have here. And just a reminder to everyone, we have our Snow Much to Read Winter Reading Challenge coming up. It starts on November 15th, um, and it runs through January 15th. So you can sign up on our Beanstack website, um, and you can keep track of your reading minutes and complete little tasks for a chance to win some prizes.